We're here at the UCSC Farm Orchard talking apples and intercropping. Most of our trees are on semi-dwarfing rootstocks, some originating in the 70s and 80s when the dwarfing rootstocks weren't very. So they're very tall trees, but more and more as time goes on, there are more marvelous dwarfing rootstocks available. So behind me we have two beds of apples rather intensively planted on five six-foot centers, a single row and a double row. Uh, the thing about fruit trees is while they're great in the end and they can live and crop for decades, even up to a century in some cases with apples and pears, they're a little slow to get started and you're probably not going to get much fruit, if any, before three to five years and really won't reach your bearing stride until five to eight years. So the issue is you've got a lot of expenses for land prep, tree purchase, and care, but you have no income coming in. More and more as time goes on, people are putting trees closer together, uh, getting more yield per area once they get up and bearing, but also intercropping in the alleys between the trees. Right behind me here, we have an eight-foot alley between the two beds of trees. And uh, typical crops that people on a bigger farm scale are growing would be easy crops like winter squash. They can just let it vine and run in the alleys and get a pretty good income. Uh, in this instance, uh, being a gardener, working on a farm, I've tried to mesh the two together and go a little more intensive. So we have four rows of peppers. Some are hot and some are not. Uh, the sweet peppers are of the Corner de Toro bullhorn type, both the full size and the minis. And the hot peppers are various hot peppers that are smoking. Smoking hot, yeah, but used for smoking and drying. So I've got about a 40 foot run here by eight foot. I've got four rows of peppers at uh, one foot spacing, couple hundred plants, and expect to have a pretty good overall yield here come late August into October.